Well, when you learn about op amps, you always learn about this circuit. Uh, you learn about the differential circuit and the integrating circuit. This is the integrating circuit. And <clears throat> there's a voltage in, and that voltage <clears throat> goes through the circuit. What comes out the other side is the integration of this um, voltage. And for people who like math, it's minus 1 over RC times the integral of the in with respect to time. So this is what you get out. Um, in practicality, if you put a square wave in here, you'll get a, a sawtooth wave out. When the polarity changes, so if it goes positive, you put plus one volt here, it'll start to integrate downwards. And if you change it to minus one volt, it'll start to go up the other direction. So you can say, oh, you can just use this to make a uh, sawtooth. Um, so I've seen these used in, in several places. The most um, common place I've seen it used in what's called a dual slope integrator. So when A to Ds were really expensive back when, and you had to make your own, um, the way you did that, oh, my camera's not focusing. Ah, just a second. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so where I've used that, seen that used before is um, to build your own A to D. Um, and the way that worked, or actually you, you could open up old products and you could see it used in there as well. But anyway, the way that it's used is you use the circuit and let's say you put in minus one volt and you allow it to integrate, all right? So this is time, and this is voltage. And um, so you put in minus one volt, and the thing starts to charge. And it charges up depending on the R and the C. And you wait some length of time, and then you say, okay, I'm done. This length of time here, T. Then you put a voltage that you don't know the value of, okay? And then you wait for it to cross zero, okay? It's gonna cross zero here. Now, if it took one volt this amount of time and it took your voltage this amount of time, there's a difference. So if they're equal, then you had equal voltages. If it took longer, your voltage was smaller than a volt. If it took, if it was quicker, then it was greater than a volt. And you could have a counter, so you could start a counter here, and you could count, and you could say, ah, uh, it took 100 counts to come here, and it took 10 counts to come here, so it's one tenth. So it's 10 times the voltage. So if, if I calibrate it at one volt, then I have 10 volts. And then you can use this as what I said as a, as a dual slope integrator. And they're tricky circuits. You have to have things in them to make them work right and stuff. And um, I can't remember actually ever wiring one up. I can't actually, you know, in 50 years, I can't actually remember trying one of these darn things out. I really had no use for one. So, um, yeah, so let's, let's wire one up. Okay, I have the circuit wired here. Looks just like the, the uh, schematic I showed you. And uh, this is what we get. Yeah, it looks like what we expect. Uh, so the yellow is the input. And so when it's in the uh, uh, high state, it's integrating downwards. And then when it's in the low state, it's integrating upwards. So my signal generator is, gen is uh, putting in plus and minus voltages. So plus voltage and then a minus voltage and then a plus voltage and a minus voltage. So um, that's what you get. Um, you know, I haven't pushed the button for different shapes. <laughs> Let's see, that one gives you a roundy shape. That's kind of cool. And Uh, let's see here. That's the roundy shape one. That's the up and down one. What if we put a sine wave in? Sine wave, we kind of get a sine wave out. Hmm, that's interesting. 
uh, did we get the cosine? If we put in the sine, it takes the integral of sine, which is cosine. I guess it does. Well, that's pretty cool. Just phase shifted. Wow. Never. That, that's news. And then we could do something like this. Oh, that's cool. I like that one too. Yeah, I like that one a lot. Anyway, uh, but that's beside the point. <laughs> um, what is to the point was the first time I hooked it up, it didn't work at all. Um, so let me, uh, I had to add one resistor. So let, let me remove that resistor. And this is the result that I got. It just went down low and it never came back. And I went, oh, and I went around and around and around trying to figure out why isn't it going up and down? I'm, I'm, I'm going around ground. I'm going plus and minus. It should, it should be averaging the ground. Well, turns out that I'm going to be too close here. Probably there we go. Um, this thing has no ground reference for the output. The output really can drift anywhere it wants to be. If it goes way up here, there's nothing, there's no feedback path that says go back to zero. So if you have a mismatch on the input of any kind, if you, if you aren't exactly, exactly symmetric and start out exactly in zero conditions and everything, this thing just wanders right off the map. Um, and I, that's something I just hadn't, I hadn't uh, anticipated. Now I know that when you use these things, uh, you generally use these things with um, FET switches or other things. You actually usually put a uh, some type of reset circuit so you can zero that capacitor out. Um, I thought that was just maybe for more accuracy. Um, but it turns out that's the way that you get it to DC reference again. So yeah, you really do need that. You need do need something like a switch like that. You can also put in a, uh, uh, a JFET an N channel JFET or something uh, instead of a switch, which is what most analog switches are made out of anyway. But um, yeah, you need some type of reset on this capacitor. So uh, I didn't want to go through the trouble of putting in a reset and having to time that reset to reset it exactly at the right time and everything. So what I did, oh, I should go back to my paper here. So what I did was I just put a uh, I put a resistor across the capacitor um, and added a little bit of problem to the circuit. But it, 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 it when, when, it, when there was very little current, this, this uh, large um, value resistor could bring it back to zero, could DC, could DC reference it again. So, oh, so let me hook it up. I'm using a, uh, uh, let's see, what am I using? I'm using a, um, a 1K input resistance to the uh, to the RC circuit, I'm using a hundred no a ten nanofarad capacitor, and now I'm adding a, a hundred thousand a hundred k uh, resistor for that bleed that bleed capacitor. When I put when I put that on there, then uh, then it works just fine. But anyway, um, yeah. I'm having fun with op amps too. Um, <laughs> like I said, I, I've never actually wired one of these up before. Uh, it's quite amazing. And let me go back. I really had, I really enjoyed just now. Um, if you go to a sawtooth, I mean a sine wave, uh, triangle, sorry, a triangle wave in, you get these roundy things. They're not sine waves. They're just kind of roundy things. And, um, if you go to a sine wave in, you get a cosine wave out. That's just super cool. I just like that one. Uh, the math is what the math is. Um, and then if you put in a, a sawtooth, uh, you get these, these humpy things. Yeah, that's really cool. I like it. <laughs>